Alright, hey guys, sorry that took a while, uh, something lagged a bit, but we're back with uh, round 3 now, Trista against Scott, Scott 2-0, been featured on the screen the last few rounds, but he just keeps on running into all these amazing VGC players, now he's paired up with Trista. Trista's team today, you'll see in team previews, Tyranitar, Mawai, Omungus, Salamence, and I didn't, Machamp, and I believe that was Gardevoir, so, uh, now we are getting ready, uh, so Scott's been able to, you know, uh, beat his opponents pretty well in the last two rounds, I'm gonna lower the music a bit. Yeah, but he beat it, uh, both of his opponents pretty hard the last two games. Um, so now we're back with uh, Trista. Trista's gonna go with Solomon's and Gardevoir, uh, and Scott's gonna go with his Mamoswain and Jump Love. Now we saw Mamoswine do a lot of work, and Jump Love do a lot of work in the previous games. So um, now Solomon's here is going to threaten that Mamoswine with the Intimidate, but of course Mamoswine does have that four times super effective uh, Ice Shard. Uh, and in the last game, we actually saw that basically able to completely take out the Solomon's um, on Angel then. <laughs> we side the trace from Gardevoir. Um, Gardevoir here, uh, you know, Jump Love is always threatening just because it does get that speedy sleep powder, so that's something that you never really want to deal with. Um, and Jump Love, obviously, such a fast Pokemon. Uh, sleep powder is one of those moves that, you know, is hit or miss, literally hit or miss, because the uh, accuracy of it is so, so poor. But um, it's one that still uh, warrants good use of it because it is very good. And uh, it, it is really one of Jump Love's uh, selling qualities. Um, and we do see the Infiltrator, if any of you guys were wondering about that Jump Love. Um, and I believe this is the team that Trista brought to Massachusetts Regional. She's going to plot a switch here onto Solomon's right away. A good play there, obviously, uh, to avoid a uh, knockout from that Mamoswine. Uh, we did see that Mamoswine was choice banded earlier on, so that Ice Shard might have just straight up in a KO. Kramtar is going to come up here. That's going to bring up the Sand and break any potential focus sashes on Jump Up as well. We see a double switch, actually. Uh, really smart play there to uh, block out a potential Sleep Powder as well. Sleep Powder does go into a Mugus, but Mamoswine goes for the Earthquake! Wow! Um, that, uh, that was, uh, seriously, the, <laughs> uh, again, so, you know, not gonna do too much damage, um, well, given the fact that it was intimidated, uh, you'd expect it to do, uh, just around that, but that was a brilliant, brilliant play on Scott's end, and Scott is really playing so, so well right now, um, just through the course of this tournament, and it is really nice to be casting this match, and the reason why that's so huge is because now, uh, he's locked into the Earthquake, but he's in a fantastic position, um, uh, Tyranitar really not gonna want to stay in at this point, and, um, that Earthquake was really, really huge. Jump left, going for the helping hand as well, so it's just, you know, full out, an offense, and we just going for that Protect there, um, and it looks like the stream is lagging slightly, and we'll try to fix that. Uh, Mamoswine goes for the Earthquake there, uh, and that's going to be a knockout onto that Tyranitar. So, wow. Um, really at play on the first end. Uh, Trista making, you know, the safe switches, but Sky probably getting the advantage there by getting the Earthquake, and that's going to pick up the KO there uh, to Tyranitar. So, quick 4-3 lead there for Scott, especially for uh, as Amoogus takes some damage. Um, and now we're going to see the Salamence come back in. So that's going to intimidate Mamoswine once again, and now Mamoswine obviously can't go for uh, the super effective ice type attack onto Salamence. So that's really big. Amoogus now also won't be KO'd by an Earthquake since Mamoswine is at minus two. So um, even though Tristel lost her Tyranitar, they're still in a pretty decent position given the uh, momentum she's bringing. And now things are swinging back into a favor. But Scott obviously hasn't taken much damage at all right now, so Tristel's going to need to start doing some damage to, to get back into this game. But that Jump Fluff, it's uh, supposed to focus Sash, probably broken at this rate because of that smart switch in to bring the Tyranitar in. Jump Fluff here is going to switch out, and we're going to see the Chandelure switch in. Chandelure um, also had, did a lot of work. We're going to see a double switch this time on Scott's end, bringing out both of his Pokemon. Um, smart because to conserve that Mamoswine. Mamoswine is really the key at this point to winning. Uh, we're going to see the Flamethrower uh, onto the Chandelure. That's going to boost his Fire-type attacks as Amoogus goes for the Spore. And that's going to put the Heracross to sleep. So, uh, Power Cross probably not as essential in this matchup now, but um, getting that Flash Fire Chandelier switch in was huge, especially if that Salamence is choice card, like most Salamences are in today's format. Um, if that is the case, then uh, that Chandelier actually might just end up winning the game right there. Um, Scott's, you know, his team just seems so hyper, hyper offense, but uh, it is really, really doing work there, and I can't stress how good that Earthquake play was in the first turn because Samalusoy was choice handed. Um, that was really sealing up the deal, uh, giving him a huge, huge advantage there. Uh, now that Chandelure does have that plus one two, it is quite the threat. Uh, we saw Scott Chandelure in the first game able to instantly KO the um, the Conkelder. And um, we're going to see the switch out here. Um, Salamence is going to be switching out, and the, looks like, the Gardevoir is going to come back in, but uh, going to be tracing the Flashfire. Wow, um, that's that's really good. Heracross is going to take a turn of sleep here. 
as the Chandelure is going to go for the Heat Wave, but because of the Flash Fire that the Gardevoir traced, it's actually not going to be KO'd. And we see the Aqua Bear from Amoongus, an item that's not as common on Amoongus nowadays. You know, uh, you often see the uh, uh, the Rocky Helmet, but they, regardless, it, because the Chandelure is at plus one, it's going to pick up the KO, so uh, Scott taking a quick 4-2 lead now. And, uh, you know, the, the Chandelure, uh, Gardevoir getting the Flash Fire, that was uh, really a godsend. If the, uh, Gardevoir got hit by that heat wave, it would have been a, a lot, a lot of trouble. Um, but Gardevoir going to hang around a bit more because it did Trace there. And Trace, uh, the ability we see most of, uh, in uh, Gardevoir, just because it gives you those options. You know, sometimes you'll be able to Trace and Intimidate, sometimes you'll be able to Trace the Flash Fire. Uh, the most fun when you use Trace is with Parental Bond from Kangaskhan. Um, Salmon's going to Intimidate that Heracross, which is still sleeping. Chandelure, uh, of course, locked into Heat Wave, but... Um, you know, we did see that Gardevoir was not choice. Uh, it did have leftovers. Salamence's item still not revealed. Um, but, you know, Scott's just jumped up to such a quick lead, and he has the Mammoth one in the back, and Mammoth one uh, with running that super effective ice shard. It's actually going to be a KO to that Salamence. Then the Mercury is going to switch out. And the Mammoth Swine is going to come back in. Not sure if I really like that play, just because now Mammoth Swine uh, might say get attacked by a multi-target. We're going to see the rocks like coming out from that Salamence. Uh, Heracross does stay in a stay asleep, oh, that's that's bad. As Gardevoir goes for the Psychic, so Gardevoir is going to target that Mammoth Swine and... Ooh, uh, does a good amount of damage, but not quite enough, bringing it to 88 HP. And... Uh, now you'd, you'd have to imagine uh, that Salamence is choice, the Ice-type attack is going to come out from that Mammoth one just to KO that Sal uh, Salamence, and if that is the case, uh, the lead will be almost insurmountable, and you see here Salamence can't protect, so the Ice Shard is going to go off onto it, it's going to be a quick KO there. Um, and Scott just continuing his domination right now. Uh, Heracross is going to wake up, it is going to get that Mega Horn, and that is going to target the Gardevoir. It's going to do uh, around 45%. Gardevoir going for the Psychic onto Mammoth Swine, uh, and that's going to pick up a KO there. But uh, <laughs> Scott's having an unbelievable run in these last three rounds. I've got luckily fortunate enough to feature him in each round. He's defeated uh, or defeated two really good players and is in such a such a good position right now in the third game. Jump Wolf's gonna come back in now. And um, you know, how crazy it is to see his team that doesn't involve a single mega evolution. Oh, he does have Mega Manectric, but he's not brought it in a single game. Uh, team that has three choice users in Mammoth Swine, Chandelier, and Heracross. He's brought in them to all his matches. Jump Wolf here is gonna go for the Rage Powder, and that's gonna redirect any potential psychic so Megahorn's gonna hit here that's gonna do uh, do another around 40% to that uh, Gardevoir psychic is gonna go off onto that jump bluff um, jump bluff proving uh, pretty bulky as uh, hangs on with a good amount over 50% here and uh, that's basically gonna seal things up um, but jump bluff a really interesting support mod with the encore and the sleep powder we saw how encore destroyed that age slash in the last game and now uh, the the uh, Rage Powder coming again from Jump Bluff as Heracross is able to hit Megahorn. So <laughs> three Megahorn hits in a row. Uh, surprising uh, since Megahorn's accuracy is relatively low, but Scott's going to take that game. Um, once again, really well played. So, uh, what a what a what a great team on his end. Um, that ter first turn prediction was absolutely insane, but uh, really kept him in the game. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy that one. Uh, once again, tweet me uh, any tweet me with any comments. Uh, of course, right in the chat too, and I'll see you in the next round. Peace.